Hello PCA members and Porsche enthusiasts, dear friends. We find ourselves in an unprecedented situation with the coronavirus pandemic. I hope this message finds you and your families healthy and safe. I can assure you that PCA has moved quickly to meet the mandates and guidance of our local and national governments. We have taken steps to protect members, staff, and our local communities. We've canceled national and regional events. We've established full work from home procedures for all of our employees. We're using video teleconferencing for our volunteer organizational meetings. Members are doing their part as well. In an ongoing series, Members Making a Difference, we are sharing heartfelt stories from throughout PCA. One of my favorite stories is PCA members in New York delivering groceries to elderly family for PCA members in California. You see, the PCA family is everywhere. You may find yourselves at this time longing to take a drive in your Porsche and to spend some time with your Porsche enthusiast friends. PCA is our collective creation to satisfy those longings, those desires. I hope you remember how fortunate we all are to be Porsche owners and to have PCA to fulfill those desires. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Peach State Region Member, President and CEO of Porsche Cars North America, Mr. Klaus Zelmer, who has a special message for our PCA members. Until we can meet again, please be safe. Tom, thank you for that heartfelt message to the entire Porsche Club of America. And hello, PCA members. I hope you and your loved ones are doing well and staying healthy. Like many of you, I'm working from home these days, but I can still drive for my essential needs like groceries. And as you all know, a Porsche is good for everyday use, not just special events. So today I thought I'd greet you from the most typical place for a Porsche fan, behind the wheel. This is my personal 993 outside my home. As you know, in the world. These are challenging times. It is especially important at a moment like this to have a community. As Tom said, PCA is there to provide this community for Porsche enthusiasts. I really appreciate the work that the PCA leadership and all of the members are doing to keep the spirit of Porsche going. I'm inspired by how you care for each other. Just like the story Tom mentioned, of making grocery deliveries to elderly relatives of PCA members. To do essential work in IT, security, our ports and our warehouses. They are following strict guidelines on social distancing and hygiene. It is no surprise that this is a challenging time for our business. The showrooms of about half of our dealerships are closed, although many service departments remain open for your needs. We have moved fast to adapt. We created a program called Porsche at Your Service it helps our dealer partners continue meeting the mobility needs of our customers, even when those customers are sheltering at home. The program expands the use of online selling for new and certified pre-owned cars. It helps more dealers offer home pickup and drop off for maintenance, as well as home delivery for new purchases. There are even at home test drives. Porsche Financial Services is helping by offering up to 90 days without payment on new and certified pre-owned cars. They are also extending current leases and offering deferred payments on leases and retail contracts on a case-by-case -case basis. So make no mistake, Porsche remains open for business and we are using this time to plan internally for how we can rebound 
as fast as possible when the recovery comes, which it will. I know this feels like a storm, but as we all know, all storms pass. Porsche will be ready to spring back, just as PCA will be ready to return to the track. Despite the pandemic, we were able to get journalists into the new 911 Turbo S and their reviews have been excellent. Bloomberg even called the 992 Turbo S a new benchmark for measuring all other sports cars. The Cayenne Coupe is now available in the US. I look forward to hearing about your experiences with the athletic new variant of the popular Cayenne. Of course, there will be more later this year. You can count on Porsche to keep you thrilled with even better variants of your favorite models. I look forward to seeing you all again in person. Hitting the road with PCA is always a highlight for me. We'll be back behind the wheel together soon. Until then, please keep sharing your Porsche experiences on Instagram and other social channels. With hashtag PCA together, it will help the PCA community to continue thriving. Thank you and goodbye for now. Stay safe. Stay healthy and remember, never lift. Hello PCA members and Porsche enthusiasts, dear friends. We find ourselves in an unprecedented situation with the coronavirus pandemic. I hope this message finds you and your families healthy and safe. I can assure you that PCA has moved quickly to meet the mandates and guidance of our local and national governments. We have taken steps to protect members, staff, and our local communities. We've canceled national and regional events We've established full work from home procedures for all of our employees. We're using video teleconferencing for our volunteer organizational meetings. Members are doing their part as well. In an ongoing series, Members Making a Difference, we are sharing heartfelt stories from throughout PCA. 
One of my favorite stories is PCA members in New York delivering groceries to elderly family for PCA members in California. You see, the PCA family is everywhere. You may find yourselves at this time longing to take a drive in your Porsche and to spend some time with your Porsche enthusiast friends. PCA is our collective creation to satisfy those longings, those desires. I hope you remember how fortunate we all are to be Porsche owners and to have PCA to fulfill those desires. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce to you Peach State Region Member, President and CEO of Porsche Cars North America, Mr. Klaus Zelmer, who has a special message for our PCA members. Until we can meet again, please be safe. Tom, thank you for that heartfelt message to the entire Porsche Club of America. And hello, PCA members. I hope you and your loved ones are doing well and staying healthy. Like many of you, I'm working from home these days, but I can still drive for my essential needs like groceries. And as you all know, a Porsche is good for everyday use, not just special events. So today I thought I'd greet you from the most typical place for a Porsche fan, behind the wheel. This is my personal 993 outside my home. As you know, Porsche takes pride in creating the world's greatest sports cars. And we are equally proud of PCA, the largest and most passionate Porsche club in the world. These are challenging times. It is especially important at a moment like this to have a community. As Tom said, PCA is there to provide this community for Porsche enthusiasts. I really appreciate the work that the PCA leadership and all of the members are doing to keep the spirit of Porsche going. I'm inspired by how you care for each other. Just like the story Tom mentioned, of making grocery deliveries to elderly relatives of PCA members. This is the time for caring. In that spirit, PCNA is prioritizing the health and safety of our employees. Since March 16th, the majority of our staff has been teleworking. A few people remain on location to do essential work in IT, security, our ports and our warehouses. They are following strict guidelines on social distancing and hygiene. It is no surprise that this is a challenging time for our business. The showrooms of about half of our dealerships are closed, although many service departments remain open for your needs. We have moved fast to adapt. We created a program called Porsche at Your Service. It helps our dealer partners continue meeting the mobility needs of our customers, even when those customers are sheltering at home. The program expands the use of online selling for new and certified pre-owned cars. It helps more dealers offer home pickup and drop-off for maintenance, as well as home delivery for new purchases. There are even at-home test drives. Porsche Financial Services is helping by offering up to 90 days without payment on new and certified pre-owned cars. They are also extending current leases and offering deferred payments on leases and retail contracts on a case-by-case -case basis. So, make no mistake, Porsche remains open for business. And we are using this time to plan internally for how we can rebound as fast as possible when the recovery comes, which it will. I know this feels like a storm, but as we all know, all storms pass. Porsche will be ready to spring back, just as PCA will be ready to return to the track. Despite the pandemic, we were able to get journalists into the new 911 Turbo S, and their reviews have been excellent. Bloomberg even called the 992 Turbo S a new benchmark for measuring all other sports cars. The Cayenne Coupe is now available in the US. I look forward to hearing about your experiences with the athletic new variant of the popular Cayenne. Of course, there will be more later this year. You can count on Porsche to keep you thrilled 
with even better variants of your favorite models. I look forward to seeing you all again in person. Hitting the road with PCA is always a highlight for me. We'll be back behind the wheel together soon. Until then, please keep sharing your Porsche experiences on Instagram and other social channels. With hashtag PCA together, it will help the PCA community to continue thriving. Thank you and goodbye for now. Stay safe, stay healthy and remember, never lift. Hi everyone, welcome back to PCA's Garage. This is the episode three for Tech Tactics Live. And today we have some very special guests with us. Uh, we're gonna attack a very common problem, which is a bad column switch. Uh, this is an 87911 and uh, we're going to swap this out. And while you're doing this, there's a couple other things that you can do, such as replace your steering wheel. But before we get into that, I, I want to make sure that all of you are, are, are safe and well and um, let you know that Maryland here, where PCA's headquarters is, we're still at a stay-at-home order. And um, like many of us, normally on a Saturday morning, we'd love to go out and do something you know, with Porsches and, and with PCA, but unfortunately, we aren't able to. So hopefully this little, little bit, uh, about an hour's time, is, is what we have to get this done. Uh, we'll fill that void for you. And uh, you'll learn a little bit, and hopefully this is something that you can use uh, if you ever have this problem. But let me first introduce two well-respected individuals in the Porsche community, in the PCA community. The first person, he is on the PCA Tech Committee. Uh, he owns Chris's German Auto Service. And on the Tech Committee, he is, his specialty uh, on the Tech Committee is the 74 to 1994 911s. Um, out of Washington, Chris Powell. Chris, welcome. They should be on the line. And next, we have a person that probably doesn't need an introduction. Um, but certainly, if, you, if you're into Porsches, if you're into DIYs, you probably know the name and you probably know the company very well. And it's the founder of Pelican Parts, Arthur of numerous 101 projects for your Porsches and other makes and models. Wayne Dempsey, thank you for joining us. Hey, guys. All excited to watch this. I'm glad I'm not actually doing it this time, and you're doing it. So well, I'll normally, I, you know, in, in, the, in our perfect world, I'd be at your shop, and I'd be asking all the questions, but this is the best that we can do. If this is the first time you've joined us for Tech Tactics Live, I am the only one in the garage here today. Uh, we have people in the other end of the building that's controlling some of the, uh, the, the IT stuff, but I'll have to move the cameras. I will have to move my mic. So... Uh, it's just me, so if it's not the perfect angle, I apologize, but we're doing the best that we can. Uh, I want to thank Pelican Parts. Pelican Parts, uh, they provide PCA members. Uh, if, you, if you punch in your uh, membership number, I believe you get a 10% discount once a year. So uh, with one purchase, you could possibly pay your member uh, membership fees uh, and get great prices on all of their parts. And for today, for those of you that are joining us, you have an opportunity to win an MPI, let me see if I hold it there closer, an MPI steering wheel for your car. Um, this is uh, designed by Max Pappas Inc. You may know of Max as a Le Mans driver, a NASCAR driver. It's a really high-end steering wheel. Um, the steering wheel that I have on my car right now is probably a familiar one to many of you. It's a Momo Prototipo, and that's a 350 millimeter steering wheel. And uh, Pelican is, is going to have us try this out. And uh, one of you that are, that are live with us today will actually win one as well. And this one's a 360 millimeter. And these, um, I think the value of these is about $399. Uh, I can tell you the Italian leather and the stitching and uh, probably the most impressive part about this wheel is the structure. Um, maybe we can bring up a, a, a picture of the, the spokes of the steering wheel so people can see. But the spokes on this steering wheel are, are much thicker than the Momo Prototipo, which gives it some uh, rigidity um, when you're holding on to it. And also the 360 millimeter 
um, diameter. On the prototype now, when I, the way I sit and it's angled, it kind of cuts off the top of my RPM uh, tachometer, and this one allows me to see everything. So I'm looking forward to putting this one on or showing you how that goes on. Now, for those of you that have a factory steering wheel, I think we have pictures of factory steering wheels. Uh, that's an earlier uh, G body and a later one there. Um, where we'll start is with those, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Chris, but those horn pads simply just pop off and then we'll be kind of in the same uh, order of procedure uh, for the process. Let me see, is yes, there anything? Yes, that's right. Um it's like uh, if you almost rip your fingernails off, then it comes off. <laughs> yes, but it does right. does come <laughs> off. Usually the springs get disconnected from them too, so watch out if it'll fly or fall off the back. It doesn't come off, they can get, uh, they can go, you know, um, the next one. There you go. They can go a little uh, all over the place. So. Yep. So again, we're, we're, we're working with the column switch here, and I'll explain it, and I'm sure Chris and Wayne can get more technical. So what's wrong with this switch? Uh, the switch in this car is always on high beam, and if you kind of jiggle it, you can get it to the low beam setting, but it just it, it always wants to stay in high beam no matter what you do. And having it in the high beam or kind of in between mode sometimes can even cause a, a trip, uh, um, a fuse as well. And so it's not safe to have it that way. I know, because I've tried it, uh, I, this is not the first time that I've taken apart this switch. I've taken apart before, and folks said you can get in there with um, with a little tool and kind of separate the brass uh, brass pieces here. And I did that, and it worked for I would say maybe a few weeks, and then I realized the the correct procedure is just to to buy a new one and and put a new one on. I think they go for about a hundred and sixty dollars. Um, the procedure for putting this in is fairly straightforward. It's all plug and play. There's a, the plug that goes into um, a harness or area under your dash. All of these connectors also are plug and play, this connector. And then this, uh, this harness actually goes to the back of your headlight switch. So we'll talk about that. If you guys can bring up so the, the uh, go ahead. Sorry, I'm the, um, I'm a bigger car, like the 87. Uh, we have uh, a relay that uh, takes cars away from us. They usually go down when they early cars, I believe, on the 356. It's all awesome. the same design, but more cars going through, so the, um, the, the contacts seem to wear out more on the early, 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 early cars. You have, have one of those. And those are a little bit more well constructed. They're made of metal, so you can sometimes get in there and clean them, and they, they survive the cleaning a little bit better. What, that was Wayne, right? That was just speaking? Yeah, it's Wayne. Sorry. Okay, just to let Sorry. you know, Wayne, your, your volume is, uh, is a little fading in and out. So however you had it, at the end it was good, but in the beginning it was a little bit muffled, just so you know. All right, move, move around. All right, so as far as tools, let's bring up the picture of tools that you'll need for this project. There you go. Um, pretty basic tools. The only thing that you might consider that... Uh, you might have to go out and get because you don't have it in your toolbox. If we go back to the camera here, is this circlip plier. There you go. And this is used so that you can remove the bezel for the headlight switch. And we talked about this in an earlier uh, Tech Tactics Live, this little hook. Uh, this always comes in handy. And of course, to be able to get your steering wheel off, not everyone has a 27 millimeter um, socket ready to go so you'll you'll have to get that all right gentlemen so if, if I can have Wayne hopefully your, your audio is a little bit better because I'm gonna kind of come around the car and get set up so maybe Wayne if you can repeat what you were talking about earlier oh, sorry about that can you guys hear me now or not I moved in a different room into my house yeah that's good okay yeah, no, the, uh, the, 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 the switch is similar to the ones they have on the 356, but the older ones are a little bit um, less plasticky, and they have a little bit more metal uh, composition to them. So um, they survive a cleaning and a scrubbing and a little bit of a sanding better 
the, the, the tip that I always, I mean, I, I, I'm a recycler kind of guy. I never like to throw anything away. So I always try to challenge myself to fix everything before I, I, uh, I, I buy new parts. And, of course, that goes against my, the whole concept of Pelican selling new parts. But anyway, uh, <laughs> um, so I always like to fix the old stuff before I, uh, 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 and the, three, the 356 ones are, are a little bit more robust. You can take a little fine piece of sandpaper, and what you do is you kind of sand uh, between the contacts. Because especially on the older cars where you have a bunch of current going through, the contacts get a little bit uh, burned out or carbon buildup and sticky and stuff like that. And that's, that's a common failure on these switches that, I, that I've seen in the past. And having said that, very often I just get frustrated after fixing the thing and uh, put it back in and, and it doesn't work again you know, a few months later. So um, it all depends on your level of pain and your level of challenge. All right, so I've got my microphone set up, and I've also changed the angle of one of the cameras, and I think we will get started. And again, guys, if uh, there are questions that you want to address, please do so, and I will get started here. First thing is you want to remove the, um, the negative post or the battery cable of the negative post of your battery because we'll be working with electronics and more importantly you won't scare yourself when you accidentally set off the horn while you're taking the wheel. I do recommend a little foam pad because you'll be kneeling a lot. You might want to stretch because <laughs> going underneath the dash can be a, a, a bit on your body. On my uh, passenger seat, I don't know if you can see over there, that's simply a wood board with uh, some towels on there and the reason why I have the towels is as I take apart all of the parts, um, I did this in the first episode of Tech Tactics Live, I create what I call a party train, and I kind of take things off and lay them across, and to put everything back together, I go into reverse order. Uh, there are a lot of small screws, very similar looking screws, so this will keep you know the screws you know straight where they need to be. So, all right, I am going to hop in. First thing I'm going to do is take off the steering wheel. All right. Okay, so hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Taking off the steering wheel, you just want to be very careful. Um, this process, if you have a stock steering wheel, you won't be doing this. This is a uh, an aftermarket Momo steering wheel, Prototipo and it has a special hub that adapts it to the car. Now if you notice, I have the steering wheel nice and straight so that when you pull your wheel off, you'll be able to slide it back on and uh, it'll be in the correct position. Having done this a couple of times, I will tell you as much as you try, there'll probably be a time where you slide it back on and it's off you know a few degrees left or right and you'll just have to pull it off and and slide it back in so Chris is this um, a common repair for you at the shop yes actually I tell people that outside of service items this is probably the most replaced part on a 911 really yeah because the problem is they run all the headlight current through those little uh, copper uh, foils in the in the uh, switch and the copper weakens over time and doesn't have that spring tension anymore and that's why they they fall together and keep the headlights on or sometimes they'll fail so that there's no headlights so you have to be careful of that now I've uh, heard I've heard of other people doing like relays um, to, to get the load off of the switch is that something you recommend or do you do that yeah that's a good idea yeah. Uh, in fact, I don't know, Wayne, do you, do you sell uh, one of those kits? There was somebody making a, a kit to do that for a while, and that uh, you put a couple of relays, and it's kind of tricky how they're wired up, but uh, once you do it, that takes all the pressure off of the off of the switch, and it won't fail again. Right, so then by... Yeah, we sell a, general, a, a generic, generic relay kit that's made by Hella. It's pretty high quality, and... Um, yeah, I'm working on a 914.6 project right now. We have the hood man mounted uh, hella lamps, and I've got the side mounted, uh, you know, meatball lamps and all that stuff, and decking the whole thing out. And yeah, I ran all all relays uh, for the entire switches 
uh, all the way through there because these are high powered lamps and, and it's just a safety thing too. You don't really want that yeah. much current running through your switch as well. No. Uh, bad things can happen. They did that in the old days, you know, with the three fifty sixes. Bad bad things can sometimes happen. When I when I test drove my three fifty six for the first time, the thing caught on fire because of the <laughs> <laughs> there was a short circuit underneath the headlamp switch, and when I went to test the high beam, all of a sudden the uh, sparks and uh, and flames were were, were were falling in my lap. On a, ever on since that day, on a test drive, I realized it and everything. Yeah, not yeah. a good feeling. No. All right, fun, fun so story. the wheel is off. I disconnected the um, the connector for the horn, and now I'm looking down. The adapter to the steering column nut and I'm going to use this 27 millimeter socket with an impact wrench and I find it is just easier and I know this is not an impact socket so please excuse me for that but this is not torqued on very strong I think it's torqued at like 30 40 um, pound feet so what you want to do is just loosen it you don't want to take it all the way off you go right in there And you can tell it just spins right off. Now what I do, and the guys can put up on the screen, is I take the bolt off first, and the little washer that's in there. And when you look down, what you want to do is take a like a white, maybe white paint or even a sharpie. Or something like that and mark the hub or the steering wheel and then mark the um, the, the bolt uh, that's coming out so that way you can line it up that's just as, as a extra um, guide for you as you pull this off now I pulled this off yesterday in practice so it should come off pretty easily but what I do when you're pulling it off for the first time is you put the bolt back on it and so that way when you're pulling on it when you're pulling on it it doesn't go flying into your face right so pull it gently let it come up and then now I think Wayne mentioned when we were talking earlier if, if it gets stuck because the steering wheel has been on there for so long what do you guys use to other than just brute force to pull the steering wheel off Well, it's usually brute force. Uh, yeah, brute force, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Smacked myself in the head the yeah. other day trying to move my 914 wheel. Uh, yeah. And I was like, I was wiggling it, wiggling it, wiggling it. I'm like, and I remember, uh, don't uh, don't hit yourself in the head. Yeah. And I pulled it off, pulled it off, and pulled it off. It's in the 914, so it's a little bit, it's a, you know, you'll see yours is a convertible, so it's easy to work on, too. But I just had the wrong angle, and I pulled it off. And then I then I slipped and and, uh, and I'm glad I wasn't I'm glad that wasn't on video. But um, <laughs> I like to put a little grease grease on the splines because unfortunately when you're doing this uh, sometimes you got to take the wheel off again in a few minutes. So um, it, 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 putting the grease on the splines really really helps. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. So and those Momo adapters are sometimes tighter than the stock one, so they come off with more difficulty than the the, the standard wheel. Okay. All right. So yeah, maybe maybe spraying a little a little PV blaster or WD forty in there gently and not liberally. Okay. Um, is a good idea. Also, I remember I'm coming back to you from the other week. Something else that I have too. I have a little bit of model train oil that's on like a little in. It's like a little uh, syringe, and you can kind of uh, get it into the splines and kind of lube each spline, and then it kind of leaks leaks down or dribbles down each spline and I did that the other day and that really helped it, it keeps it prevent from uh, uh, keeps you from making a huge mess with like the PV blaster or the WD-40 okay that's a great tip so I am now removing the two screws on the side of the column here and for those that attempt this the first time this is where they can break things because they think that this um, this trim is only held on by the two screws, one on the left, on the right, when in fact, there are actually four more screws inside, which I'll show you in a second, that you'll have to remove 
in order to get these pieces off. All right. So these two screws go to the party train. All right. So let's pull up the picture. You can see there's two screws down here. Now I don't have one, but it would be really cool if this screwdriver was magnetic because then I wouldn't have to be so worried about dropping a screw and having to fish for it. But maybe Christmas I'll get one. One screw. Now this bottom right screw, you'll notice that there's a ground wire behind it. So just make note of that so that when you put it all back together, you make sure you put that ground wire back in place. And if, and if you're looking at the picture, you'll see there on the ground, that ground wire on the bottom right. Now the Might next be thing, a good idea to take a picture with your phone before you take it apart, just so you know where things go. Absolutely. Thank goodness for our cell phones. I make, I take so many pictures, so I know how to put it all back together. So now I'm taking the horn contacts off. Yeah, that piece, the horn contact fails all the time just because it wears out from the steering wheel. So if you're replacing the switch, chances are your horn contact ring has seen better days as well, too. At least that's what I've seen. I've never seen one that looked good, like, ever. Wayne, you didn't tell me, <laughs> Wayne, you didn't tell me this the other day. Otherwise, I would have ordered one. <laughs> it's all right. See, that's why you guys should watch this video because you're going to learn more. Okay, so this one now will come out. A little magnet, a magnet tool is awesome in this case too. Otherwise, you will lose your uh, screws in your lap very easily. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you can get one of those things they call a screw starter. Uh, have the magnet on one end and then a, a spring-loaded uh, blade on the other, and that helps when you go to put these screws back in. Ah. Yep. I need to invest in one of those. Okay, so now I'm working on the two screws behind the horn contact, and that'll enable you to take off the top half of the column cover. So this, um, at this point, is also, for those of you that have never replaced or might have a worn out steering column bushing, um, it's right there. You could buy the sleeve, um, remove the sir clip here. Oh, let me get out of the way. Remove the sir clip here and put the, the, the insert there so that way your steering column doesn't wobble. That happened to me a few years ago. I remember I was uh, on track at VIR and all of a sudden my steering wheel started to just wobble side to side. And I think it was, I guess, the, the plastic bushings that was there from, from factory, just they just crumble. And then all of a sudden you have this space in between your column and the and the tube and it's really unnerving especially on track so make sure you check that while you're doing this did we put up a picture of that that insert there you go there should be another one where you can actually see the insert piece column sh column bushing Maybe the file is called column bushing. There it is. That's the answer. Okay, so now you can carefully remove the column halves. Put the bottom one there. Then you get to this top one. So there you are. You are now looking at your column switches. Now I did replace my right one uh, at one point because uh, I had an autocross or had a DE. I think I hit it with my hand too hard and I snapped this lever. So this has been replaced before. And then here's the one, the, the one that we'll want to change up today. Again, um, I, I think I mentioned it earlier. I'm not sure if I did or not, but this piece that you're looking at right now is actually the new one. Uh, I practiced yesterday in putting all this in and what I found out is this job is not going to be a one hour job. So we're still going to go through all the motions, but I will tell you that this is the new piece and that's why it's nice and clean here. And, um, but we'll still go through everything and that way you'll learn how to do it. 
Uh, let's see. So then the next part would be the two column switch screws on the side. Get here. You'll remove those two, and then you'll push it down to the back, and then let it hang on this on the off the column there. And they're all there's two there's two harnesses, and all they do is they just slip under the column here. There's a there's a gap. It is kind of tight. You'll think that how do you get that plug through there? But you can, and that's why I'm saving you from watching me thread that for 10 minutes and we'll save some time um, it will thread through there and then yeah. you just follow the so two push the a buoy yep. you should be pushing the um, plug column the plug wire in first before you push the bare wires because then there's more room right i did do that good point i did put the plug through first and then and then did the other one good point good point uh let's see okay so once this is loosened and it's hanging off then what I focused on next was the headlight switch because let me get the switch here. So this one, this is what uh, Chris was talking about. Putting this one through first because it's the biggest uh, is the best tip there. Put that one through and then put this one through. So once you put this one through, this you'll just snake it over. You'll you'll see where the existing wire is running. And just follow it and this actually just plugs into um under and underneath the dash there you go there's a picture of it so that just plugs in that's super easy and then these connectors you'll also follow the wire to your existing one and connect on um connect that onto your uh on, onto your car and then this is the one that's a little bit more difficult when i replaced the wiper switch all i had was i think just one I didn't realize I didn't have this to, to deal with. So um, this one you'll snake through and all of these connections are actually done behind the headlight switch. And this is where Chris gave me the, um, the heads up that I was going to have to actually un, uh, take the headlight so, switch out. So and, a, couple, a couple of things, if I, if I can jump yep. in. Um, two things, um, you know, uh, I hate to criticize parts and stuff like that, but sometimes stuff doesn't always work and it's not always the right part. So I always like to take the, the you know, an electrical part, especially if my car is a daily driver, uh, take something like this and um, test it out and make sure the switch works uh, without actually taking apart the wheel. And, and I can't remember on the 87 if you can test fit it first. I know at a shop you guys probably don't do that, uh, but uh, it, it's always wise to do that if you need to drive the car that afternoon or something like that. <laughs> And then, That's a good uh, point. Yeah, you can test it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I always recommend that if you can. And then, Chris, I'm just curious, just so everyone can have a comparison, what, what is the shop rate in terms of hours in terms of replacing this? What, how long does it take a professional shop, you know, that you guys do, you know, maybe hundreds of these? How, much, how long does that take usually? Oh, you, can, you can do it in about 40 minutes. Okay, cool. Yeah, that 40 takes minutes, long. man. You work fast. Now, I will say <laughs> this, this, this car has an alarm. And what took me a little bit of time yesterday was uh, once I pulled the headlight switch out, the alarm tapped into the parking lights um, and also power, I believe, off of, the, um, off, of this, off of this harness. So that's kind of not the typical install where I had to actually disconnect from the old harness and then reconnect and solder and, and tape and, and all that kind of good stuff so that that probably added another 20 30 minutes to to my install but just know that if you have an alarm system on your car you might you might be prepared to you know adapt that wiring to your new harness okay so hopefully you guys can see the um the light switch here and you're just going to take your little take your little pick here and just be very careful it is like a rubber it is a rubber piece here that you can go back behind and then pull you see that you can pull this out this is over there and then there's a 10 millimeter Ten millimeter in here, 
And this is tricky. You don't know this stuff unless somebody tells you, right? So there's a 10 millimeter. Well, also, um, it's obvious. Uh, uh, it's harder for some cars, but if, if your seats come out really easily, just take the 30 seconds and take the seat out, too. You get a lot more working room. So I, yeah. I, as I said, I'm working on my 914 right now, and they literally come out in, in less time than it takes to say this sentence. So if you don't take them out and you're all that room, uh, you, you kind of have to twist and con contort yourself. But if you have that option, that's, that's, that's a really smart thing to do. That's true. And, yeah. and for, I think, cars of this year, there's really just, what, four bolts? Four bolts to the seat bottom and then just take your seat out and clean room. Because this, this piece right here on my seat, I think I have a permanent dent in my back <laughs> from laying underneath <laughs> the dash. All right, so I've taken the yeah. 10 millimeter nut off and the way this switch comes is you go counterclockwise can you see there counterclockwise and it comes comes right off and this is where you need your special tool but let me do a time check are we close to 130 yet how are we Okay, we're okay. So just make sure if you haven't already, um, put your name and where you're from. And uh, oh, we already did. James Laws. Oh, really? Okay. Well, congratulations to James Laws for winning the steering wheel. Um, all right. So back to the job. See, this is why it's quicker because you're you guys aren't distracted when you're working. I'm distracted all the time. Um, so a circlip. Let me see. Circlip pliers here. And what you will do is insert them into this bezel piece. Let me just interrupt for one second while we have that up on the camera there. Yeah. I noticed you got a big cart behind your uh, driver's door there. Uh, when I'm working on something like that, and I did this the other day, is that uh, I always, my back sometimes bangs the door, and then there's a the carts right behind the door, and you could scratch or dent your door. So I usually like take a towel and, and throw it over the, um, the driver's side door there so it doesn't hit, a, hit the cart in the back, even if it's accidentally. Because I get all involved and work inside the car, you never know what your butt's going to do or your leg is going to do or something like that. So it's better to be safe and, and secure on that one. I love having you supervise me because that's, that's a very good point. Thankfully, I have a further... Uh, as, I said, as I said for years and years and years, and in the books that I wrote, I said, here's all the mistakes that I've made, all the screw-ups that I've done uh, working in tight spaces in my garage. And I totally, I totally see your car right behind there. And I'm like, yeah, that is, that is at <laughs> my door so many times that I just don't even bother. I just put a towel on it just to make sure that uh, it doesn't roll into there or, or anything like that. Been there. Yeah, that. been there, done that, I'm sure. All right, so once you get the circlip plier in there... And this takes a little while because kind of get mine happens to kind of hit that, but you just go counterclockwise Oops. and be very careful that you don't slip and scratch or dash. Just take your time with it, and it will come out. And then once it's loose, you can yeah, once you get it loose, it comes out yeah. pretty easily. Okay, there it is. So that piece comes off. Actually, I'll get closer to the camera so you can see it. There you go. All right, there's two washers in there. And this will actually just slide back. Now, I, I also took off this side panel because I had some wires and just to have easier access. There are three Phillips head screws. One here, one here and then one on the inside. I think that picture needs to be vertical, but so there's, you see here, so there's one up high, one down low, and one on the inside. And that just, again, gives you more room to play with all the wires. And then this will actually, you can just push it back. I won't do it here because there's really no need to do it. Um, but it'll just slide back inside the dash, and then you have plenty of room with the wires there that it'll hang down kind of right around here and if we can put the picture of the headlight switch exposed, you'll see what, there you go. So that'll be what you'll have underneath the dash. And so for me, because I don't know exactly where all the wires go all the time, what I did was I left the original um, switch in place 
and I snaked the new harness wires in. And so with the new harness here, I took them off one by one and you just follow the colors. You know, there's gray, black, there's white and black, there's gray, red and red and white. And I just pulled one off and immediately replaced it until I was done, you know, disconnecting uh, all, all the wires from the old harness. And then I pulled and then I pulled the old old one out. And that way I know I didn't cross anything or mix up the wires and made sure that it was all good. Let's see, what else did we do down here? Um, you'll definitely need some cutters if you zip tied. Again, this had an alarm system in it. So I had a million zip ties under here. So I cleaned it up a little bit and uh, changed the wires. Then went back to the bezel and put everything on. So the reverse of it all, go ahead. Uh, another, you know, <laughs> go into sales mode here. You want to make sure that you kind of, you know, as your owner of your car, you go through all the systems here and make sure they're all working okay. And yep. if you have a light switch that's a little flaky, now it's the time to replace it. It's almost, it's almost obvious not to say this, but now's the time to replace it. If you have a steering lock column, that's, that's a pain in the, pain in the butt. Uh, you know, I just did that the other day on my car. Uh, it's a good time to kind of, while you're in there, take a look at that. That sticks and fails, you know, quite a bit. And, and I tried to repair mine the other day and I ended up not being able to get it apart without machining and screwing the whole thing up. So I had to buy a new one. Those are really expensive these days. They're like $700. Yeah. Ooh. Yes. Um, so yeah, you want to try and repair it first and if you can't, then, uh, but you don't want to get stranded. And what, what my problem was the, uh, the, uh, on that car was the, uh, the key would go in and then you turn and then it wouldn't start the car because the, the lock mechanism was sticking, and it's a common failure. Um, headlamps, running out of headlamps is bad, but not being able to start the car is a, is a, is a tow truck. So yeah. um, if, you're, if your ignition switch is sticky, it's a good time when you're in here to kind of uh, maybe think about replacing that or even maybe taking it out and, and shooting it uh, full of some lube or anything like that because you don't want to get stranded on the road. All right, so I've just put the headlight switch back together, rotated it all the way to the right, which is full brightness, and that's kind of where I'll slide my little piece back in. So that's how it will look at full brightness, and then off. So that's good to go. So all of it really, I'm not sure how much time we have, but um, going backwards, follow your party train in reverse, and you, um, as, as uh, Wayne said, you probably want to connect things and just test the light switch um, connect your negative cable turn on your lights and of course i've already tested all this and everything works great how much time do we have guys yeah, a good 20 minutes a good 20 minutes okay so maybe you guys can watch me put things back together are there some questions online that you guys uh want to address I, I would just say that one more thing is that I mean you're not you're you're um, you're not doing the whole uh, squeeze your body underneath the dashboard like uh, like uh, like uh, I've been doing the entire week working on my 914. I forget to sometimes I will admit that, but I gotta say make sure you wear safety glasses because one of those wires gets down and falls down when you least expect it uh, and it drops in your eyeball and then you uh, you're you're in for a world of hurt. So. Uh, Safety glass. In fact, my tip is I like to buy, um, you know, maybe 20 pairs of safety glasses because you're always constantly misplacing them. And the problem is that when you misplace them, then you're like, ah, screw it, I won't use them now. And then you drop something in your eyeball. So if you have 20 pairs, you just misplace, and you're like, okay, I'll just grab another. Okay, I'll just grab another. Okay, I'll just grab another. And it really, really helps you to, to, to be uh, semi-religious on that extremely safety uh, you know, I, I was working on a car the other day, a BMW, and it had a cooling system failure, and uh, the thing popped up some, some uh, steam into my eyeball, oh. and I didn't even think about wearing safety glasses, but it wasn't, it wasn't like the steam was hurting my eyeball, but uh, a piece of metal from some rust from inside it popped into my eyeball, and it's the first time it's ever happened, and uh, I'm usually really good about wearing safety glasses. And I was like, one of the few times I'm like, ah, no, nah, I don't think I need them. I'm on top of the car. I'm not under the car. 
And sure enough, I got a piece of rust in my eyeball, and they had to break my eyeball to get that out. So I can can tell you, they had to put an eye patch on me, and then they wrapped my head with this eye patch, and I I had a headache, was sleeping. I mean, it was terrible. Uh, Yeah, it's it's always when you you least expect it. Safety glasses. Safety glasses. That's a, that's a good public service announcement, Wayne. Thank you. Especially when you're using impacts, too. Uh, I, I, should, say, I should have mine I'll on. I'll make the mistakes and tell you guys all about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, any tough questions on the board or on the chat room? So I am just going in reverse now I'm and putting, putting back the horn button. The chat room? The chat room, yeah, you got to go to YouTube to see the chat room. It's not on the PCA site. Right, it's on oh, YouTube. Oh, that's, that's yep. my mistake. Okay. Yeah, so if you go to the PCA window, and then you click on uh, the little YouTube icon, and then you go there, and then you can see the chat room there. Gotcha. So everything should go on pretty smooth. Um, I do remember yesterday there was one part that needed a little, how do you say, a little trick to get things back together, and I'll show you here in a second. So again, when you're reassembling the bottom bottom piece, just make sure. Uh, let's see here. Okay, we've got a timer set up here. Lou, Lou, I can't remember. Did you add? Did you tell everyone to mark with a marker the, the location of their steering wheel nut and the on the spline there, just to help them kind of align it? Yeah, I did. So right here, you can see white paint. I had like a white marker that goes down this okay. thread here, and then I also matched it to the hub. And I also, of course, when I parked the car, made sure everything was straight. Oh, I know what I was going to ask you, is I used, obviously, an impact to remove the nut, and some people might not have that, and they may be using a, you know, a, a regular um, socket wrench or something like that. Uh, one of the things that you don't want to do is rely on your steering wheel lock to keep it in place while you're untorquing that nut, right? Yes. I have a tip that I came up with 20 years ago, <laughs> and I, I, I was trying to figure out how to remove the wheel, and uh, I wasn't strong enough to hold the wheel and, and turn the uh, breaker bar, and I happened to see the, the club, you know, one of those steering wheel locks, so I just put the steering wheel lock on the steering wheel, put the uh, large breaker bar on, and, and pulled it off in, in like maybe three seconds. So oh, I was actually doing that the other day with a 914. And I couldn't find my club because I never use that thing anymore. I have it stored away somewhere, but uh, I got someone else to help me hold the wheel while I did that. But the club is really, really, really useful. For I can't tell you when I yeah. last saw a club. <laughs> yeah. I have a friend who uses one, and I'm like, okay. Still? <laughs> but he, he insists on it. He insists it's great, and, and he says, my truck hasn't been stolen yet. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so here's, an, here's another little tip. Um, that I found useful yesterday is this little pick here. Hopefully you can see. Oh, uh, there you go. This little pick here to line up that um, that ground wire to the hole. And once you do that, you can get in there with your screw. And again, this is where a, a magnetic one or something would be super handy for me. And you guys can watch me be a klutz here. Try to get that on. Oh, look at that. It will go on. Ah, oh, I missed it. I missed it. Darn it. This is where that screw starter comes in handy. Uh, you're going to have to send me a link to what that thing looks like. Screws. Yeah, I already looked it up here. Uh, which, which brand do you use, Chris? Well, I don't even know. I've probably had it for 40 years. Uh, okay. Yeah. I don't know if I can put pictures on this chat thing, but there's like a KC tool uh, screw holder thing that... Uh, uh, I'll, I'll try to put the link on here and see if that works. Right. Nope. Cool. Don't work. Oh well. Thank you. Uh, someone on the forums asked uh, on the not forums on the chat asked about uh, whether there's a relay uh, the kit available with instructions. Uh, no, of course there's no instructions. 
uh, other than basic instructions. And the reason for that is that like every single car is different, uh, but the basic principle is the same. You um, you basically run power uh, the hot to the to, and Chris, correct me if I'm wrong on this. I'm doing it from memory. You run power, the hot power to the relay, and then the ground to the switch. So that you're you're basically powering the the relay, the small electrical contacts of the relay through the switch instead of powering the high-powered headlamps to the switch. And the lower the current or, or electrical flow that goes through the switch, um, the less kind of wear it puts on the switch. Because every time you, you, That's right. every time you pull every time you pull a switch with a lot of current through it, it sparks and sparks a little bit. And every time you have a spark like that, it um, wears away a little bit of metal, like a little bit of a mini welding process, I would suppose. Um, so you do that hundreds of or thousands of times, and that stuff wears away. So what the relay does is it isolates the current so that the spark that you get, instead of being a big spark, is a, is a humongously tiny spark. So it'll last a long, 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 long time. And then what happens is that the relay itself inside has a little coil with two contacts, and when you power the relay, the two contacts are what um, connect together, and those are uh, what where the where the bigger spark then is for the headlamp. The nice thing about that, if your, if your relay fails, you just throw out the relay and get a new one. It's plug and play. It literally takes less time than this sentence. Um, saves you the time of replacing this expensive switch too. So. Yeah. Hey, you know, Wayne, Cri is, Wayne, instead Chris. Instead of switching the headlights directly, the so the column switch now switches the relay. And then the relay is built to take 30 or 40 amps of current, so there's, there's plenty of room for uh, having uh, larger head, uh, you know, brighter headlights and that kind of sort of thing. So it, it, it saves a lot all the way through. What about... Now, on the, on the 87 here, I thought that these had a relay in there, because I know, I mean, it's been a while since I've worked on one of the... 87 cars, but the 914 I've got in my garage, I'm 99% sure it's got relays for both of the headlamps. Because I can hear them clicking as, as I turn them on and off. Uh, but the 87 didn't have that, Chris? No. Hmm. So the, the 964 uh, got headlight relays. They finally fixed this whole problem. Ah. So what about cars that have like these aftermarket LEDs? Is it Would it be less of a load on the switch with those kind of headlights? Or headlight bulbs? Uh, yes, I believe the LEDs actually draw less current. Okay. Chris, have you have you done many LED upgrades in older cars? I, I haven't had as much luck no. on the older cars as I've had with just using LEDs as like aftermarket lamps. I mean, no, just, I, I've just gotten, a couple so far. I've gotten, you know, on the early cars, you know, the, the blinker blinks fast. If, if, if your light bulb is out, sometimes they don't have the right resistance across the the, right. uh, the, 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 the terminals. Sometimes they interfere with the radio and a lot of back uh, EMF or interference or whatever. I, I, I've done this a couple of, a few times with the LEDs trying to update some of the older cars, and it just it just never seems to go as smooth as I, as I hoped no. it would. No, I'd agree. Uh, it, it doesn't always work, and I think it's because of the way the grounding happens, and and those little tiny wires. The the current isn't doesn't work with the old system. Yeah, I I, I just don't know what it is. I mean, I've done it on 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 the Porsches, and I've done it on BMWs, and I've done it on my Ford. Uh, uh, what do you call it? An RV. And each time it's been a pain, and it just hasn't worked. And I always, I, I was wondering because everything is all, you know, bought on Amazon. You know, LEDs. You know, you can't really right. tell if it's a good brand or not. I was always wondering if it was the brand, and I tried different brands, and different brands have different interference and different work. It's, it, it, yeah. it, what I thought would be a ten-minute project turned into like five or six-hour project for each car, and after that, I was like, okay, I'm just going to buy a whole bunch of incandescent bulbs and use those from now on. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe yeah. if people have asked, they haven't got it all worked out yet. Maybe if there's a specific brand that uh, someone's worked with on for a particular car, that would be a good recommendation. But I, I haven't quite found that magic formula yet. No. Nope. All right, so I'm getting down to the last part where I'm sliding on the um, the adapter, 
And you kind of so most people don't know this, and I, I didn't know this for like years and years and years, but I can't see from the photo too well, but your, uh, your Momo adapter is a special adapter that's designed to crush in an accident. Uh, if you uh, if you hit it with your face. Oh, that's why it's got like, like these things here, like that. So so yeah. So some people use solid adapters and other things that they use in race cars. I, I don't really recommend those for street cars because it's, it's from a safety point of view. Um, I think you you want to be able to have that crushable um, kind of uh, hub in there. I don't know how well it works. <laughs> But I haven't tested it myself with my face. But uh, um, seems you know, to make that's sense, supposedly though. Supposedly, what they're there for. Seems to make sense for it to be, to crush. Now I'm not yeah. gonna I'm not gonna yeah. torque my nut here, just yet. Um, but what I will do is, here is the new steering wheel, the MPI, and I'm actually gonna pop off their horn button, and I actually have. A spacer for my existing one. So I'm going to swap these out. Of course, I love this Porsche crust. So I'm going to put this on to here, and then hopefully this will pop on. So the other night, the other night we were getting ready the 914 ready for the um, uh, literature meet. And uh, it's a car that we've worked on for a long time. And it was the night before the, actually it was the Pelican open house. It was the night before the Pelican open house. And uh, we installed the horn back in and it was 1.30 in the morning. And I'm like, okay, we got the car running. Let's take it out for a drive. And uh, the horn, I don't know, something happened with the, it, it's all custom installation. So something happened with the horn wire and the horn wire shorted out. Oh no. And this is at 1.30 in the morning in my, in my neighborhood. And uh, woke almost every single neighbor up. Uh, <laughs> So just be aware that you're, uh, you're, when you're dealing with the horn, don't, don't test it at 1.30 in the morning. If you don't well, that's why, I took off, that right. the hard way. that's why I took off the negative side of the battery, just to make well, sure. Well, no, I mean, we, we put the, yeah, then, then when you connected it, oh. it was fine. But as soon as we drove out of the, car, out of the driveway and we went over like a bump or the, the driveway tilted it, something inside the steering wheel wasn't working right. And... Uh, and uh, it put the horn on continuously, so I had to drive back in, and then drive out, and drive back in, and the horn's going on and off and on and off, and I got a nasty letter from my neighbor <laughs> the next day. So, right. Um, they must have been thrilled, I, I, I Wayne. I did not anticipate that problem. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, on some installations, especially with a cut, it was with a Momo steering wheel like this, and in uh, the 914 with the hub adapter. Um, and on the 914, it was it was a it's a little weird of an install it's a little odd of an installation, and I and I had to custom put in a, a connector in there and all that and jerry rig it and blah blah blah. But uh, just be aware your your horn may uh, may go off uh, if you're if you're installing a custom wheel. And it's not the, it's actually not the first time that's happened. Now these bolts came with my Momo, and they're a little bit longer because of my extension. Um, than the ones that came with the MPI one. And these these are, I guess, coned, so they should, they won't sit flat on this wheel. So the, the, the bolts that came with the MPI wheel are rounded over and they look much better. So um, just know that these bolts are not for this wheel. I'll, I'll see if MPI or I'll go to the hardware store and get some, some nicer ones. But this is just so that you can see what it looks like in the dash once it's all put back together. So that's what it looks like. And uh, let me see, no parts left on the party train, which is good. The light switch is working. Um, yeah, and that's about it. We're about, uh, and about 50 minutes into the broadcast. I wanna thank Wayne and Chris for joining us today. You guys are awesome. We could probably talk for another five hours easily about everything about Porsches. Um, so thank you guys for joining us and everyone at home. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Tech Tactics Live If you liked it, please hit the like button. Please subscribe that way when we have another one coming up You can uh, be alerted that the show is going to take place at a future date So with that be safe everyone and hopefully we'll see you out and about soon. Bye Bye-bye